Northwest of Mount View Lab Trend Guy Segment Show. Also today in this segment, I'm at the Corning Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, and continuing episode 110 with part two. What you see right behind me is Denver and Rio Grande of 1447. Denver and Rio Grande of 1447 was built by the Denver and Rio Grande Burnham Shops in Denver, Colorado in 1945 and is an all-steel cupola caboose. Denver and Rio Grande of 1447 was used for the standard gauge Denver and Rio Grande Railroad on the back of freight trains many years ago and also was used as the train crew's office as well. Then later on, this caboose was retired and then was stored at the former Denver and Rio Grande Burnham shops in Denver, Colorado, which is Marcus Rail, and it is also the Union Pacific Railroad's Burnham Yard as well, and also it may have once been owned by the Greeley Freight House Museum in Greeley, Colorado, which it is the Colorado Model Railroad Museum as well and it may have stayed in the yard it was in. Also, it was spray-painted with graffiti whenever it was in the yard, and eventually it got removed, and the caboose was repainted by the Museum of Railway Workers. Then, in 2017, it was bought by the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, and in 2018 it was relocated to this spot at the museum and seen on display in the parking lot where it is today. Okay, I'm going to show you all the exhibits along the fence on the platform. So I'll get behind the camera and show you all around. Here we go. Got that part. Okay, so right next to the passenger car from Sweden. Those look like automobiles, but let's show the train ones. Okay, right here are some lanterns. You can see they're numbered. But you could, if you want to pause and read, you can. Let's go this way. Here are like some facts about the big boy, which is right here. And this is a cutaway sketching of how a steam locomotive works. You can see it's all labeled nicely. Sorry about that light. Yeah, pretty interesting. Here's a model of the big boy that is right here at the museum. Show more. So we're just going along the fence. Here's a picture of 4014. Just this, these pictures were taken right before I uploaded the, this video. Yeah. And here are all the vehicles. And that shows 150 years of the Transcontinental Railroad's completion. And this is a McCoy style lubricator, an example of what it looks like. That's Elijah McCoy, or Eli for short. He's the man that invented these. Thanks to him, no more oiling cans would have been lost. You could even push it. Ooh. Wow. Let's see. All right. It shakes a bit. And there's the coach. China. It's used on the railroad. These may have been used on the Santa Fe Railroad. There's some line out trains and a few China plates. Pennsylvania Railroad. Wow. And here's what the dining cars look like. China plates. And Amtrak. A hard hat, teacup, and teapot, and I wonder what that one is in the middle. There's some old pictures and old brochures, or that might have been a schedule, I think. The California Zephyr, which makes a stop here in Denver. 
only on Amtrak these days. There's a board right here, and an unusual, unusual looking steam locomotive. This is like an old kitty toy. So if you want to read that, feel free to pause. And here's some in information about 715, which is this car right here. Yeah. That's all I have to show. What you see right behind me is Denver and Rio Grande 804. Denver and Rio Grande 804 was built by American Car and Foundry in St. Charles, Missouri in 1927 and is a dining car. Denver and Rio Grande 804 was used on a Denver and Rio Grande Streamline passenger train many years ago and also the car is also named Pikes Peak. Denver and Rio Grande 804 was also used for passengers eating on board at tables inside breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, Denver and Rio Grande 804 was used with passenger cars painted in the same paint scheme when used on passenger trains on the railroad as well. Then later on, Denver and Rio Grande 804 was retired and then came to be part of the Forney Museum of Transportation when the museum was located on 15th and Platt and then moved to Brighton Boulevard. And also, you'll also see there are mannequins inside as well. What you see right behind me is Denver and Rio Grande 3006. Denver and Rio Grande 3006 was built by Electromotive Division in LaGrange, Illinois in 1962 and is the 27140 40th diesel locomotive built by that factory and is a GP30 type diesel locomotive. This locomotive spent its life working for the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad on the standard gauge line and was used hauling freight on the railroad as well and it was also even used for hauling passenger trains as well. Then in like the late 1990s it was later retired and later was stored in Burnham shops in Denver, Colorado which is Marcus Rail and it is also the Union Pacific Railroad's Burnham Yards as well and also it was spray painted with graffiti on it. Then in 2018 it was moved to the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado and became part of the collection and put in this spot where it is seen today. Union Pacific 903053 was built by the Industrial Works of Bay City, Michigan in 1901 and is a Derrick Crane. This crane was used for the Union Pacific Railroad and originally numbered as Union Pacific 02801 and then later on renumbered as Union Pacific 903053. Union Pacific 903053's lift capacity is 40 tons and it was used in the 23rd Street Yard in Denver, Colorado and was used to move shifted loads on rail cars and to position rail car truck wheels during a change. Originally, Union Pacific 903053 was made to run on steam from a coal-fired boiler and then by 1967 it had been converted to run on compressed air as air pressure was available throughout the 23rd street yard to power various tools and equipment. Also Union Pacific 903053 was used as a maintenance of waypiece on the Union Pacific as well. 
Then later on, Union Pacific 903053 was retired and came to be part of the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, when the museum was located on 15th and Platte and moved to the new spot of the museum on Brighton Boulevard as well, and this crane can also be seen here on display at the museum as well. Also, Union Pacific 903053 is the oldest surviving derrick crane built by the Industrial Works of Bay City, Michigan. What you see right behind me is Denver and Salt Lake 715. Denver and Salt Lake 715 was built by Pullman in 1906 and is a passenger coach. Denver and Salt Lake 715 was used on passenger trains many years ago on the Denver and Salt Lake Railroad. Also, the inside of this car is designed with fancy furniture and cushions and all detailed inside. Then later on, Denver and Salt Lake 715 was retired and then came to be part of the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, where it is today. What do you see right behind me is Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy 301. Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy 301 was built by Pullman in 1902 and is a business car. Originally, this car was built as a wood-bodied car and was used by the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. This car was used on passenger trains on the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad many years ago at the back of passenger trains. It was originally numbered as Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy 208. Then it was renumbered as Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy 301. Then it was named Iowa. In 1930, the wooden body was sheathed in steel, and the car was given steel frame trucks, and it was bought by the Colorado and Southern Railroad and was numbered as Colorado and Southern 900. In 1949, air conditioning was installed and was sold to Richard McKinley. Then this car was sold to the Polk family of Chicago and it got repainted saying Polk Brothers with it saying on the sides Illinois Sesquicentennial as numbered PB1. They owned a chain of appliance stores in the Chicago area known as the Polk Brothers. This car was used in 1968 to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Illinois becoming a state. Then the car was then later retired and in 1978 it came to be part of the Forney Museum of Transportation when it was located on 15th and Platt Street and then later moved to this spot on Brighton Boulevard and also it is on track level of the museum as well. What you see right behind me is Colorado and Southern 10501. Colorado and Southern 10501 was built in 1906 and is a wooden caboose. Colorado and Southern 10501 has a Burlington route sign on the side as well. Colorado and Southern 10501 was used on the back of freight trains on the Colorado and Southern Railroad for many years and was used as the train crew's office as well when being used. Also, I do believe that this caboose served on freight trains from Denver, Colorado, then south to Trinidad, and north into Wyoming. Then, in 1977, Colorado and Southern 10501 was retired and came to be part of the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, when it was located on 15th and Platt Street in Denver till the 1990s when the museum relocated to being on Brighton Boulevard. 
Also, Colorado and Southern 10501 can also be seen here on display at the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, where it is today. Denver Tramway Company 40 was built by Laclede Car Company in St. Louis, Missouri in 1886 and is a horse car. Denver Tramway Company 40 was originally numbered as 271 and then either in 1888 or later on was renumbered to 40 and later on was renumbered as 901. This trolley was used on streets of Denver, pulled by horses, and hauled people from one trolley stop to another. However, the Denver Tramway converted from cable to electric operation. Most of the cable cars were burned. This car survived and was used as a tool shed by the Denver Regional Transportation District. When a Mr. Horn, a former RTD employee, heard that Denver Tramway Company Trolley 40 was going to be destroyed, but then he arranged to purchase it and moved it to his ranch near Conifer. Then the car was purchased by the Forney Museum of Transportation in Denver, Colorado, and Bill Wright of Fort Collins, Colorado coordinated its extensive restoration. Also, Denver Tramway Company 40 can also be seen here on display at the Forney Museum of Transportation, where it is preserved today and can be seen on platform level.